Hey, welcome to Lab the Podcast. I'm grateful to share some time with executive producer Brock Starnes. Brock has advised and produced content for leading children's educational brands. He's launched businesses, holds a master's degree from Victoria University in Wellington, New Zealand, where he researched the roles of strategic relationships among technology startups. For the past 10 years, he's served as a partner at Brentwood Studios, where he's advised clients in the areas of strategy, partnerships, and product development, and serves as co-creator and executive producer for new media properties, including Michael W. Smith's children's brand, Nurturing Steps. In 2022, he joined Shining Isle Productions as COO and executive producer. Brock, thank you so much for making time for us and congratulations on the project or on the success of Wing Feather series. It's awesome. Thanks, Zach. Good to be with you. I'm also excited about the Wing Feather saga. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, the book has already been a huge success. 1.5, probably over 1.5 million copies sold. So the book was already a tremendous success. And now, and we'll talk a little bit about the story, but you're right in the middle of prepping for the broad release late summer of season two of the animated series, which I'm so excited for the work that's being done there as executive producer as you're right on the threshold of summer, what's like job one? What's the thing that you're thinking about and watching most closely as you all prep for the launch of season two of the animated series? Yeah, Zach, that's a great question. We, you know, I have the privilege of of being able to work alongside um, so many artists and storytellers who have joined our team over the last year, who are also uh, many whom fell in love with this series by reading Andrew's books and wanting to give up their skills and talents to see this thing uh, succeed. And so we we have amazing teams of animators and story artists and background painters and editors and all the kind of normal roles that you would find in animation or in filmmaking. And so we are hard at work finishing season two right now. We're almost done uh, with our with the final episode. Uh, and and that'll put a kind of a cap on the series, and uh, and so we are so excited to share that out with the world. And um, so some of the things we're dealing with is we're f- we're finishing those episodes and then figuring out how do these uh, uh, how to tell this story so that many more families can experience this um, this animated series who have might have not seen it before. We have so many fans and families that have been so moved by these books and by this um, series. And um, we want to find ways to give them the the tools and the the ability to help spread the news uh, that this series exists and that it can be, um, it is a new family movie night for, uh, uh, for kids and families um, to experience together. Yeah. I I get that feeling. That's what's so exciting is all of us. I have four kids and my youngest is nine. He devoured the books, loved the series. And so super exciting to think we love the family movie night cadence when you have a series that you can follow along with and everybody can sit down. You can watch episode and episode after that. So I love that. And you've been on board since 2022 with Shining Isle. I wonder, before we get into the story, because there's even though there's 1.5 million copies sold of the book, there's people who are brand new to it. So I want to give some time Mm -hmm. to the story itself. But it's I think what you all are doing is so important on a broader scale to provide access and to think about new ways to introduce these stories. So help us maybe see some context about the origin story of Shining Isle and your aim to create a platform and bring together a team to turn the 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 book side into an animated series. Give us a little bit of the backdrop. Was that Andrew's idea? Uh, it was that his aim from the beginning or did that kind of develop as the book caught on and got legs? Yep. It's great. Yeah. So Andrew uh, Peterson, author of the books and one of the executive producers, and then Chris Wall, uh, our showrunner and executive producer as well. Um, founded Shining Isle in about 2016 when they both had the vision to adapt the series and to uh, adapt the book series into an animated series. And Chris and I met uh, a long time ago when he uh, was at VeggieTales and I was, he was a producer, the producer there. Um, and I, uh, I, I grew up uh, in and around that studio. Most of my uh, summer jobs in high school and college were, were there. And so we got to know each other a long time ago there. 
And that vision, the vision of Shining Isle, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a number of rootings that would be inspired by Phil Vischer and Mike Naraki, who, who founded VeggieTales, is that ability to tell stories well of the highest quality, to utilize some of the best artists in the world to help tell the story um, and, and do it in an innovative way, uh, in a very creative way, and what, in a way that uh, that resonates can often resonates these stories. You know, Wing Feather Saga we we know has resonated very deeply with Christian families, but it also is a redemptive story that resonates uh, uh, with all audiences or with with a wide reach of audience. Um, the books are now translated into fourteen different languages and and released throughout the world. And our experiences way back in the day with Veggie Tales were similar. It's it became an accessible series because of its comedy and the way it was innovative, and uh, and its artistic contributions there too. Um, and, and so there's a lot of that DNA here, but there's also a newness too. Um, we we love. Uh, there's this old quote of being able to tell the truth, kind of slant or or uh, in a in a little bit of a different way. And we we are a team that is so drawn to this story, but also drawn to narratives and and um uh and stories that that there is a deeper there's a deeper truth that often is resonating there uh um but it is it is stories of of life stories of experience or or in our case a fantasy series and so those uh for those who have been fans of tolkien or or lewis or 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 um uh stories that are like that harry potter Harry Potter, you know, Wingfeather has has fit there in a lot of for a lot of kids and families. And those are the stories that we're drawn to and drawn to tell now in animation. Yeah. And so I love your use of Dickinson's Tell It Slant. You know, that that for our moment, that approach to say we're in a post-Christian, post-secular moment, which so many people have remarked about the uniqueness of this moment where there is a really broad openness. And I think you're hitting it on the head that lots of families are, maybe they didn't grow up around a faith tradition at all, but there's an orientation towards beauty and goodness and truth. And they mm. long for that. They long for stories. I think about Lewis saying, we don't need new books about Christianity. We just need new great books that people will mm. engage and uh, that will awaken the imagination. I think that's what's so exciting about what not only Andrew's done with this series, because it's really well written mm. and it's it's beautiful in its character development and all the layers of a good story are there to take that from the page and to do it justice, right? There's a risk there, um, especially mm -hmm. to carry something so successful from the pages of a book. Harry Potter is a great example. I mean, people, you almost get nervous to put something in film mm. because it's been so successful in the pages of a book that allow your imagination to fill in the gaps. Uh, talk a little bit of, just about the team that you brought together and how you all have approached that high bar because I watched the series and I was in, I started season one, episode one and thought this is fun. And the character development comes through, there's humor, there's tension. The score is amazing. So how, what was, what were some of the top things that you said, we've got to get these things right. Uh, if we're going to mm. put this into the market in a way that families are going to, to pop popcorn and sit down and be on the edge of a chair to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had the experience and privilege of working on a number of children's and family brands over the years. And I, I, uh, um, one thing that is core to the way we're making this is we're doing it in partnership with the author. Andrew is involved in each step of the way um, uh, at the character design stage, at the scripting stage, at all the animation reviews. And, um, and it has been uh, incredible to see him uh, advise and provide feedback there, but also um, uh, also champion the creativity or the new ideas that are being brought by the teams who are you know leveraging their unique skill set, whether it be character designs or um, or storytelling and how to how to animate this character. And so uh, so core to it has been that relationship. And seeing that the author can be involved in this process, it's not 
it's not now the filmmakers take it and kind of run off with it. It's something that he's been able to uh, uh, continue to pour into and continue to advise and and um, and and create alongside the team. The you know the other component that I've uh, uh, that I've been drawn to in this process is just the attention. I mentioned it a minute ago, but just the attention to detail and quality. We sought to to do um, an animated series and have a unique look and feel to it. You know, if you if you watch the series, it has a very hand painted look, and this is um, uh, could not have been done if not for Keith Lango, who's our really our architect of the pipeline and the look and feel, because so much of animation had moved to photo real. We uh, we wanted to find a way where the artist brush stroke or the artist contribution could could be maintained on the screen. Um, filmmaking is inherently collaborative, but in that collaboration, uh, uh, it's hard to sometimes be able to point to uh, a singular artist contributing, you know, that character, that animation, because it goes through so many different iterations and polish along the way. And one thing we have sought to do with this series is, is allow for those brush strokes to be there, allow for you know, in season one, there are over 900 backgrounds that were hand painted uh, for it. And, and that that gives a certain uh, uh, artistry and certain look and feel there, too. We also uh, believe and, and love and audiences have responded to this is is it invites a certain imagination into the experience. You know, the books do that, just the nature of reading. But by um, by providing a little bit more of a non-traditional look and feel that has this painterly style uh all the edges and all the corners are not all defined mm. uh and so there's there's it invites you to kind of fill in the gaps of what else may could is there what else is missing in the world and um that you may not be seeing there so um yeah yeah i, I think that's so well said i didn't know the all the hand-painted backdrops i didn't know that detail but you feel it as the viewer that yep. You you notice that this is not what is just you know maybe the series that are animated series being pumped out over and over and over again. This one is different. It feels different. The art feels there's a nostalgia to it. I think for that may be the wrong word, but I felt like that. Like I'm watching something that yep. pulls you in. It's a story that's unfolding, and it feels like that that you're in being invited into a story, which is really really wonderful. And I think important, and this is, we talked a bit before we started recording just about our championing of, of your work, this series for sure, but the, the massive effort to do what you all are doing is so important because we learn through stories and we're, our moral imagination, even our imagination about good and evil, God, what's beyond the stories make that accessible and it provides the fertile soil for us to dialogue and for parents to do what parents do best. And it's something that we can't take for granted. It would be lost. And I love that you were able to raise seven, it was the largest crowdfunding ever for uh, an animated series. I can say from my side as a parent, there's a deep hunger for these kind of stories is the market telling you that as a executive producer, as a, as a studio, are you feeling that same push that something's changed and the market is really hungry for these kind of stories done with this kind of quality? Yep. Yeah, no, I think it is a, um, a, a time where audiences and families are just putting their hand up and saying, we want these things to exist. And now there's, you know, through Angel Studios, we were able to, to crowdfund. That was a mechanism. Uh, the books had been um, had done Kickstarters uh, in, in the past, and we did a short film that was kickstarted as well. So there's kind of a in Wingfeather, there's kind of a long history of the fans kind of bringing this whole thing to to bear. Um, but we had not done it at the scale that it was done for the animated series through Angel. Uh, and um, I mean, it's the coolest thing to know that this this is a series that that would not be made if it wasn't for the fans putting their hands up and saying, we want this to exist. And so and that's the feedback we are receiving more and more, which is just um, we want our fans want us to tell the whole series, you know, tell we've adapted all four books across seven se seasons is, is basically how we envision it. And we're two seasons in. We've done a little bit of work on season three to get that one ready. 
And, uh, and I know there's such a desire from the audience to kind of tell it all the way through too. And, uh, and so we're, um, you know, one of the things we're, we're constantly working on is, is introducing people to how you watch it. And, um, you know, it's currently been available through Angel Studios and season two has been uh, exclusive on their subscription platform, which is called the Angel Guild. And, uh, and so fans are, are finding their way to the show and then, and then eventually buying DVDs and, and, you know, buying it on iTunes or wherever else you find shows. Um, And so, uh, but I mean, the most humbling thing to know, hey, families like ours basically just said, we want this to exist. And a lot of them did that. And and now it is. And it's uh, it's just a remarkable thing. Yeah. No, it's super cool. And I think for parents who don't yet know the series and are just hearing this for the first time, they maybe aren't familiar with Andrew Peterson. They're not familiar with this particular series. Give a quick just summary of the story and where where it's starting. And you don't have to give away season seven, but the arc of the story, where it's heading. Um, I would love for you to introduce it and then talk a little bit about um, how people can access the, the story through the Angel Guild is is the best way for families to share this, really just to send people to Angel Studios and go directly there? Uh, are there other ways that they can help be a part of sharing the story? But first, kind of whet their appetite for what is the story if they are unfamiliar? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so season one and book one opens up in, in a, a township called Glipwood, and we find we meet this family. So there's three siblings. Uh, two two boys, a girl, uh, a mom, and a grandfather, and we are basically following these kids. These are our lead characters, and we're fo- we're ultimately following the whole family. But these they are in a uh, it's a fantasy world. Um, so it's a uh, if you think about like a um, uh, a place from Lord of the Rings or a place from um, uh, from the Chronicles of Narnia that this this is a new a new space that they're in and this world has been taken over by fangs uh which are these lizard like creatures um and so they are they are under oppression uh and and kind of everything that they do is kind of watched and guarded and uh and these kids are coming of age you know they're 8 9 10 uh and they they are uh learning uh who they are and what their place is in the world and and they are discovering and we see this in season one, they're discovering that they, they actually have a, a, some powers. They have some abilities that uh, they weren't aware of previously. And um, we later learn that these abilities are being sought by, they're being hunted by um, uh, Nag the Nameless, who is basically the bad guy in the, in, the, in the story. And our family has to flee and they have to seek to flee to safety. And so we, we see them traveling. Uh, it's a, it's very much so a traveling show. They're kind of moving through the world, and um, and in the process, it, discovering who they are and and what their place is in this world. There, uh, uh, there's a a number of kind of goofy, uh, silly elements as you can expect. We have toothy cows and flabbits, and we have all these creatures that exist in the world. Um, but uh, as you go deeper in, the stakes get higher, and these kids have to choose whether they are going to be stronger together uh, or whether they're going to go follow their own path. And, um, uh, and there's, there's, there's uh, big decisions ahead for our, for our characters. And we're starting to experience that now as they're getting into season two and discovering some of their family history and um, uh, not to spoil too much, but, um, um, but ultimately we are, uh, what we love about this series and what I love when I read it to the first time is we are following three kids and, and many of our fans and, and kids see themselves in these characters and, and the extended characters and families see themselves in these families. We, we often say this is a family that doesn't just like each other. It loves each other. And, uh, uh, and so uh, a little preview Zach into the wing feather saga and, uh, Angel Studios is where you can see it. So you can see it on uh, angel.com backslash wingfeather and season one is there for free. And uh, if you'd like to see season two, um, you can do that through the Angel Guild 
Um, and uh, you can also go to wingfeathersaga.com and, and be linked to it there too. Yeah. It's so cool to hear you kind of give the preview. And I'm imagining that parent who has just been really dying for a series. And I know this happens for us. You go to the library, you look online and you're like, I don't know, you know, there's this one looks good. This one might be good, but I just don't know. And your generosity to spend time with us and say, and give us a glimpse into not only the heart behind the book, but the heart behind a whole team saying, Hey, what are families sitting down and sharing together and how can we, how can we keep this story unfolding in new mediums? I just appreciate that in, and I think it's, uh, I want to cheer louder because it's no easy thing. When you think about the distribution rights and everything that has to happen from a business side to get a book transferred into an animated series and get that animated series into homes. And we got to talk to Jeff Harmon from Angel Studios and he was telling the story of The Chosen and just that it was not getting traction. It couldn't get views. There wasn't, people were not following it and it just seemed like it would never get out of uh, its own um little silo. And then all of a sudden it just opened up and now the chosen is everywhere. And it's extraordinary to hear how many languages the books already been translated into and to think about how a medium like uh, an animated series can travel even further and even faster. It's pretty exciting, but that's not without a ton of work and a ton of good people. So what do you Mm -hmm. think you've learned most? You've been through this with being a part of the VeggieTales series, other animated series, other educational series. So this is not your first time diving into a project and saying, we've got to do this with excellence. It has to make business sense. It has to stay true to the story. There's so many things and so much complexity to that. What do you think you've learned now that you look back and you say, I have changed. I approach these projects now in this way where maybe 10 years ago, I wouldn't have. How do you think you've changed as an artist and as somebody involved in this collaborative process What's different today for you than it was maybe when you started? Hmm. That's great, Zach. I, I, um, uh, you, you know, I think as you get older, as I get older, I, I, uh, see the value more and more in collaboration and, uh, you know, there's often, you know, it's easy to think about, Hey, I know exactly how this needs to play out. And, um, and I, I have, uh, we have had both um, older veterans on our team and and kind of young guns on our team as well. And I've loved seeing how um, uh, some of our youngest contributors to the series, uh, their voice, they've got a seat at the table and their voice is heard and, uh, and, and they have something to contribute here too. And that's, uh, you know, that's so much my experience as a, as a parent too, and having kids of, of just wanting to champion uh, some of the younger voices in our, you know, in our family or, or in our company uh, to be able to, to do what they do and grow in their skills, you know? And so that was, I would say in, in, you know, my experience of producing this, this series, it has been, uh, it has been such a team effort and uh, uh, a very stretching effort on a number of fronts, but, but, um, but to see and to champion uh, younger voices uh, in in this process has been uh, um, uh, has been a, a, a it's been a learning curve for me of how you know how to do that and how to do that constructively. But it has been such a joy. Yeah. It's, it's cool to think that there's that continuity from a, not an old guard, but you somebody gives us the shot, right? There's a some time mm-hmm. where we're working a summer job at a studio or something, and we get that first opportunity to contribute uh, in a different way to a project. And now uh, downstream, you are here as an executive producer. I love hearing you say you're thinking already about who's coming up next and how do we put Mm -hmm. them in the right place to, in again, baptize their imagination to the power of stories and to the significance of art in culture. And art has been trivialized in so many ways where we've said it's a secondary thing or it's, you know, there's this segment of society, you know, and it deserves this investment. Uh, But when we really think about reality, when we think about who we are as human creatures, 
that we're drawn to beauty first. And that's what awakens us to good. And then we find our way to, to, to put our feet firmly on true. But it is beauty that draws us first. And if that is true, which we believe it is true, and historically it's proven true, if that's the case, then the investment we should we should be thrilled to invest heavily in artists, heavily in the artistic uh, direction and the companies, the stories that are being produced. And I think that's what's again most exciting for us and our work is to say, if we want to address the fundamental things and we want to undercover, uncover reality as it is, and you know, in Christian circles, we would say the kingdom of God, a visible and an invisible world that you you thought you knew it all, but there's maybe more to the story. And if that is true and we want to uncover that, the most powerful way we can do it is through beauty. And it's through beautiful stories mm-hmm. that are going to move us to good and land us in true. This is what Wing Feather Saga series is doing. And so if you're a parent, uh, I can't endorse it more highly from our own family. We've seen the impact. I, I love the idea of all of our families sitting down with this series. I'm excited for the late summer when season two comes out, but you can already start with season one. I know some people don't like to start until everything is out, but get in there and watch season one, and then you can be excited for season two. Brock, I want to ask for that parent who says, okay, I'm in. I, I want to, I'm going to move this right to the top for our family, uh, whether to purchase the series uh, in book form or to watch. When you think about the, the earliest introduction to this series, who's the best What's the best age, uh, in your opinion? Where's that first um, kind of readiness, uh, reading level wise or story accessibility? Where would you say is the sweet spot for a kid to get introduced to the Wing Feather Saga series? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Zach. That's such a key point because uh, uh, you know every family is different, and 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 uh, and so we need to acknowledge that. But but this the book series and then the the animated series we we see really resonates deeply with eight to 12 year olds. It's probably the sweet spot and families. And so there is, um, this is a, uh, an intense story. Uh, there is action and adventure. There is, um, uh, there are scary moments, you know? And so there are some families who younger kids will, um, uh, will engage with it you know um we we see many times there are the six to seven year olds that also uh will watch um but every family is different in in kind of determining what that looks like what i um what i love is that it's not the series is not uh uh only for eight to twelve year olds though it's that's really kind of the starting place if you will um we have so there's so many teenagers and 20 somethings and 30 somethings and Yesterday or last week at the office, we had a couple in their, um, they're probably in their 30s or 40s who have just read the books three times themselves. And uh, uh, and then just recently have introduced their kids to it. So there's, um, uh, so that's really the starting place. But the, um, I'd encourage, you know, this is something you can, kids can watch by themselves or watch, uh, uh, you can watch it by yourself, but it's really best as a family experience. It's really a, um, it's a fun, you'll, you'll see, you'll see different people in different characters in the story. And it's, um, it's a fun thing to, to, um, experience together. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, I love what you said about being able to sit down and watch it. Kids can watch it by themselves. I think that's a question I hear parents ask. I know I've asked it. I've got a work call. I'll be honest. I'm going to take a nap. And I just want to close my eyes for a few minutes. Can I trust that whatever I'm putting on, I don't have to be right there to monitor it. I love the idea that this is a series that whether it's together as a family or if your kids are on an eight hour flight across the country, you could say, hey, this is a great one that they can they, they can take by themselves. But it's rich if we do it together. That's that's super cool. Brock, thank you for again for the time. This is it's it really is exciting. The work that you've done, it's deeply meaningful. It's deeply important. Uh, we hope, please pass on to your team. Just that there's all of us and our audience out there cheering your work on, not just at the entertainment level or at the artistic level, but for what that means and the deep, mm. deep significance of you and your team doing the work to say, let's take this story. 
and let's take it not just um, into a book and then move on, but let's really look at this and say, how can it be impactful across multiple mediums? How can we do this with excellence? How can we get the best young guns around it and seasoned veterans around it to really serve this story? I just celebrate with your team that there's a lot of us cheering that work on. Don't grow weary in it. And if you're listening to this, here's what I would say. Just go to Angel Studios. You can find the Wing Feather Saga series there. Uh, obviously, if you don't have the book series, grab the book series. I would just encourage you to follow along the development. Season one is out. Season two is coming out. But you can already access season two right now through the Angel Guild. So they, there is a way that you can do that. Uh, Brock, for people who just want to follow along, is there a social media aspect that people can get updates, they can follow the story along? Where do you point people who just say, okay, I'm in, I want to follow this story as it develops? Yep. Yeah, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. Uh, We release all our live streams and uh, uh, trailers there too. So uh, we have a Discord server if you're interested in that. So there's a number of those kind of outlets, uh, kind of wherever those platforms that you uh, you, you follow things on, we'll, we'll be there. And uh, wingfeathersaga.com is also a good resource to give an overview of the books and in the series as well. That's awesome. Final thing I'll just ask, we love to be in the corner of artists and people who are producing great things uh, in the world. So as, as a team, how can we, how can our audience pray for your team? What's the one thing right now that you would say, Hey, pray for us. We need funding. We need exposure. We need more people to engage. What's the thing that you and your team, when you get around a table are saying, Hey, this is the thing that we would pray for as a team. Yeah, no, thank you, Zach. There's, uh, uh, there are so many things, you know, there, but I, I think we are, we are, um, uh, we are so thankful for how many fans have found this series and who have loved it, but for an animated series to, um, to really succeed it, uh, it, it you, we have to grow, you know, we have to, there has to be a, a whole wave of families who also find it and may find the animated series. And so we're really excited to welcome those new families into this series and um, and that is, but that uh, continues to be both a, a prayer uh, and a and a work. You know that the team, both at Angel Studios and and for us, are working on is how do we make this series uh, accessible and and allow people to to easily tell their friends that this exists and um, and and being able to experience it there. Yeah. That's good. I love pray and work. That's the way forward. And that aura at labora, that's the motto to, to really yep. bring excellence. So we all can be a part of that. Pray for Brock and his team, the wing feather saga series, angel studios. Let's, let's commit to pray for the project and pray for the series, but also take Brock up on that invitation. And I would just encourage you think about nieces, nephews, grandkids, our own kids, uh, our schools, introducing this there's so many creative ways that we you know it's like six degrees of all of us have a network that touches hundreds of people if we really pay attention to it and i i think that's my final call to action everybody is just in our moment beauty leads to good lands us at true there's a huge amount of work to do there's great people like brock and his team doing it our part can be to help make those connections and just use your imagination and suggest different ways that maybe a family can do a movie night you guys can take it on or share it with your school like i said or just be courageous and that'll be my final endorsement but sometimes we're sheepish about linking and sharing things and saying hey this is worth it but the quality of this story and the way it's being told are really 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 cool so let's do it brock thank you for the time we appreciate it and keep up the great work Thanks, Zach. Great to be with you.